Hey, hey, everybody. It's Jane. Good afternoon. It's it's Tuesday. <laughs> so this is a new like a new week, the beginning of the week. Yes, yesterday was a crazy day for me, and I met a good friend for for what we thought was going to be coffee, and we spoke for hours, and it was wonderful. But today we're going to be finishing this jewelry box. I can't wait. I'm going to show you what I'm up to. Let me just make sure I'm actually on the right page. And there I am. Let me get that link to my text group people. And the internet has decided to slow down. There we go. Hmm, copy link and all right, I'm going to close this so I can focus. So last we met, and remember I found this hulking, hey Shannon, triple heart today, how are you? Oh, I've been like, I started, oh, that's so sweet Shannon, thank you so much. I have been kind of fussy painting this say jewelry box and I gotta tell you guys I'm really I'm really excited about it I have this thing everything has to be square there we go okay and by the way if I I'm using some new tech today if I freeze up if I disappear from Facebook I'm gonna try to keep recording and then post it and it will also be over on YouTube so I painted this in and I absolutely love this paint. I love this color. This is <clears throat> Debbie's Design Diary. And this is vintage linen. And it's beautiful. It reads as a white, but it's this just beautiful, beautiful kind of sophisticated. It's not a cream. It's like the palest, palest, delicate gray. I love it. Oh, I'm so glad you love this. Shannon saying she loves the jewelry box. Yay! So what I did, Shannon, and what I'm going to do is continue to do so I could show you guys. I painted it with two coats of this paint. This is a, hey, Barbara, how are you? <laughs> Shannon, I know, it has to be square. You have to see, I go nuts. I'm like, wait a minute, everything is off kilter. This is a clay-based paint, and I love it. I absolutely love it. It definitely has a learning curve. And I got this from my friend Joni of Weathered Wings. And she said it has a learning curve. And I have worked with paints like this before. This is the kind of paint, it does not have a built-in top coat, that you can really manipulate, right? Um, but you have to be careful and you have to keep that in the back of your mind. It's like if you put on a second coat and you keep going over and over and over, you're going to reactivate the paint underneath. But for wet distressing, for decorative, for blending, for all kinds of decorative techniques, this paint is really, really nice. And all I did, oh, hi, Amanda. Isn't it cute? I love this. And it's it's really big. It's a big jewelry box. Um, so I painted it, and then I very, very delicately distressed. And I did it with sandpaper. I, and I did this not because I'm faking anybody out that it's, you know, worn and aged. It's really just to define the lines, right? Because we've got a lot of lines and I wanted to kind of show off those panels and things. And that's why I did it. And I experimented here on this straw with... Um, a little bit of the Pebeo um, gold wax, the gilding wax. So I'm going to be doing all of the hardware today. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Oh, thank you. She's saying she loves it. I love a good jewelry box, right? So that's what I, that's how I painted the whole thing. And then I thought, okay, let's be realistic here. This has got a lot of action. This is little raised panels. You know, it's... You know, I'm like, what am I going to put on here? How am I going to get all around this? And I thought, maybe I'm just going to leave this alone for now and think about the sides and the top. 
Now this, I it's it's for me, so it's something I'm going to be using. So hopefully this is, isn't, oh, I'm going to have to move out. Let me see if I can move the camera back so you can see. Oh, I can't. I could get closer. So this is, as you can see, a paint inlay. All right. And I, I did one on one side. Ooh. And I did one on the other side. These paint inlays, you guys, I've used, I mean, this has got to be maybe the fourth time I've used these paint inlays. I didn't want anything super clear or bright, right? You see that? I want it to look like faded, old faded wallpaper, just for some interest. So when you're looking at it from the side, it's going to be on a vanity. You'll see something going on there. But if it was too bright, I felt it was it was just not going to be harmonious with this front here. So that's what I did. And I'm just using scraps. So let's see if, let's do the top. So look at that beautiful, pristine top, right? Square it up, Shannon. There we go. <laughs> hey, Sandy, how are you? So I went through two, two ideas for the top. I'm like, well... You know, I could do something, and remember, you can play around with the right sides of the inlays up, but when you're really getting down to designing, you have to remember that they go right side down. Okay, I've made, I made this mistake once, and you want to always see the grid up facing you. So I thought, all right, I can kind of mess around, you know, and make like a laurel-y kind of shaped thing here. And then I'm like, it, 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 remind, and it, it reminds me of a collar, right? A collar on a, a blouse or something. And though I like it, I don't like it for this project. So then I decided, let's just do it like a, like I got a scrap piece of, wallpaper and I just put it down so you know here's our here's the, the stag and I do want him you know going I don't want him upside down going across right I don't want him going like this that'll make me insane so um if I'm not already <laughs> so I thought well he's pretty cute so I can put this on like this and yes, it's just a scrap. There's, there's, it's a page, and it's supposed to be matched up. But I don't care. I just want it to look like a piece of wallpaper I stuck down. And then for down here, I thought I would cut a little bit here, and then maybe add in, you know, some of this right here, right over there. It does, right, Shannon? It looks like a collar. And if I go back to my drawing days, you know, <clears throat> if I was doing a portrait of a woman on a piece of furniture, I could always give her this lovely paint in lay collar. And it is, it's really beautiful. So I'm, I'm saving this for something else because I do love how that goes around like that. But I'd rather see it, you know, up at me and not down like this. So let's put this on and then I'm going to try for the first time, and I'm a wax maniac. I'm like, I love wax. I either love waxes or hate waxes. So this is the DIY clear wax. And if you ever get this, I it says here, scan for instructions. I went and it and went to like an inactive page. Then I just looked up the wax and it's it seems like it's gonna be a great wax. It's just brush it on, wait for it to dry, and then buff. That's my kind of wax, right? Shannon, this is my favorite. This is, well, I, I, I can't say my favorite, but it's in the top three of the paint inlays. I think this inlay is gorgeous. And the colors, like I did that grandfather clock in my living room, and I just love it. I just love these colors. They're, they're complex. 
Um, they're, they're not clear. They've got some gray in there. They're just beautiful. So I'm with you on that. All right. So I'm going to cut out a little bit off here so I can fit an inlay. So it's going to go like this just so I can see what I'm doing. And honestly, this is like the fourth time I'm using this paint in life. All right, so like that. Oh man, and I said I wanted to save this, so I'm not gonna use this. Oh my God, I could use the butt end of the, um, of the deer. Ugh. Or I could go like this. What do you think, you guys? I have them just running across like that. Maybe I should do that. What do you think? And it will be, oh, I like that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then if I want, if when we take this off and I go, oof, it needs something, I can add it in there. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. So grab a brush and the paint, and I'm gonna use Joni's technique where she sprays. I'm gonna mist the inlay, especially since I'm using the paint that Joni uses. All right, so I'm putting on a nice coat of this. And I think you've all heard me talk about, I have an old, old door in my living room that has to take um, place of my, it's, it's replacing where I had my china cabinet, which I moved out. So I need something on that wall. And I want to use a paint inlay on this old door. And I sit and I contemplate it when I'm eating dinner. And Shannon, I'm like, should I use, you know, the chateau paint inlay? What should I do? And it's a hard decision because it's got it, the door has this beautiful old chippy paint, and I'm like, oh, what should I do? And I realize I just need to make a decision and just do it because otherwise it's gonna be like this forever. All right. So what Joni does is she takes the inlay, and then I'm gonna do this. Well, I could do it right here with this misting bottle. I'm just gonna mist. Give that a little mist and then put this down and hopefully I'm leaving enough room for his rear ends. Now you're not supposed to do this, but I am. I'm lifting, <laughs> moving. Okay, just like that. I'm just gonna get this down and get his rear in. All right. I'm going to put a little paint under his hoof. All right. So let's, that's down. Then I just give it another little spritz like that. And since I don't have my um, brayer, yay, I remembered, I'm just using a little sea sponge here to press down so it makes good contact just like that but yeah look at these colors they're so beautiful for fall too but even in the summer i just love having these colors in my um living room Of course, what the brayer does is really give you good, good contact. 
you know, really even. Shannon is saying, or like me who can't decide for weeks, then ends up picking the exact same color milk paint I already have. <laughs> Do you, I've done that. I've done that with makeup. Shannon, I've done that. And it's like, well, I guess I love this color, right? So now, so Shannon bought, she has Artissimo by Miss Mustard Seed, which is my absolute favorite blue. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. And then she bought, what is it called, Shannon? Inkwell? Ink? I always... I, I, I always get the name wrong, but it's the new formulation, and that's the new name for Artissimo. So, so we've decided Shannon has to paint a piece of furniture because she's got a lot of that. Okay, so there's that. Let me grab my tissue. It got very dry here in Connecticut, and that I think it kicked up a little bit of an allergy thing. So I'm gonna put my brush in water, and then ink blue, yep, that's it. And it's, it is, it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful color. Okay, I'm gonna push this. I'm gonna use my blow dryer. That's how I did the sides. Now normally you would do this, you would let it dry for about an hour. And when you went to touch it, it shouldn't feel like this feels cool right now. It feels damp. You should go to touch it, you know, and it should be like this where you start to see more paper than the inlay and it should dry. I'm really pushing it. Barbara saying, I have this inlay and haven't opened it yet. Barbara, open it. It's scary. It's scary when you first use an inlay because it's like, okay, I, I spent this money on this inlay. I don't want to mess this up. It's something totally new and I've never done this before. And at some point you just have to do it. Even Barbara, if you just get yourself like a little scrap or you know those little wood tags that I, I did a video on that and you just take maybe a little sample of course, don't do that until you know you're not going to need that little edge or a little piece of um, an inlay. And then test it out and see. You know, get your technique down and then go ahead and use it. a collector aren't we all oh my god it's really bad I have got so much stuff all right mine isn't dry I'm gonna lift up a little corner and see how it looks because I don't want I want to do this today I want to get it done so I'm just gonna You know, when you go to lift this, when it's completely dry, I don't want you guys, especially when you're first starting, to do what I'm doing, okay? Do as I say, not as I do. You're going to actually let it dry for at least an hour. I've let them dry overnight. But you would then spray it, press down that water into the paper so you get a, you know, a good release. And there it is. That's just what I want. I want something, and of course, that's the way it's going to be because I've used this inlay so many times, but it's kind of irregular, and 
That's what I want. So what I'm gonna do now is spray the whole thing. And then press down, push that water into the paper. All right, and here we go. And there it is. Beautiful, I love it. And I'm gonna save this page, who knows, I might come up with something, you know, another project. All right, let's get his backside. And there it is, I love that. I just love that, that is exactly what I wanted. And it does, isn't it beautiful, Amanda? And it doesn't fight with the front. You see what I mean? If you see those together, it kind of goes together. If it was too bright and too crisp, I don't think I'd like it as much, you know? But isn't that beautiful? It's got jewelry, it's a jewelry box. So now let's quickly, let me show you how I wax. I'm gonna leave the top to really dry. And let me show you how I wax. Let's try this wax. I always use a little cardboard palette like this. Here's the DIY. And this is, this is beeswax, carnauba, candelilla wax, saracen wax, and isofar. So those sound like some interesting things. So I put the wax down, and it's nice. It doesn't really have a, an, a smell. All right, and I've got my, I'm using just my big um, natural bristle wax brush. And I just, I'm going to emulsify that wax. And then... I'm just gonna go in here, I'm going right over the hardware. If you watch the part one of this, this hardware is impossible to take off, so I actually had to paint around. But I'm just going over. And yep, you see the paint get a little bit, it almost gets like translucent, and I bet it goes right back. when it dries to being opaque. See how it's getting a little bit darker right there. Grab some more wax. And again, I'm gonna let the top dry and then I'll do that later. But that's it. And this wax, it did say to let it dry overnight. So I am gonna do that. So I just wanted to show you how, let me flip these up and get underneath. How I wax. And then the last thing I wanna show you is my favorite. <laughs> I don't even sell this. It's gilding wax. So I, you know, I experimented before. I just tested, but because I just put wax over, not dry gilding wax, it started to lift it. So you would gild your hardware in the, in a perfect world after this wax is all dry, you know, the next day, okay? So here's the gilding wax. Isn't that gorgeous? And I just take, you could take a cotton cloth. Oh, this one's too big. I'm just going to use a paper towel. You could use your finger like this. And a little bit of this goes a really long way. You just dip it in. And then 
show you. And you see that? It just brightens this hardware. Isn't it beautiful, Barbara? I love it too. And that's it. That's like the total look. And this is something I'm gonna use. I can't wait. Okay, and this one, again, now you gotta be careful not, to, it's good that you have a clear wax coat on here. So if you accidentally get some of the gilding wax on it, you can use the clear wax to then lift it off onto your painted surface. We don't wanna, we don't wanna do that. Isn't it pretty, Shannon? So I'm just gonna lift that up, get a little bit more gilding wax. And I have to tell you, I've had this gilding wax for years. It lasts forever. All right. Oh, there goes my, my little chihuahua willow barking. But look, isn't that pretty? It just gives it a little bit of a, a brightness that it didn't have before. And yes, as I use this, the, the gilding wax may start to wear away and that's okay. I think I'm gonna like that look. And if I wanna refresh it, I just add more. Isn't that beautiful? And that's it. Sandy, oh, Sandy's saying really pretty, I love it. Thank you. The hardest part of this project for me was absolutely the painting. The painting was a pain in the butt because it's, a, it's actually a really good jewelry box. It's made really well. And these this hardware is just like in the drawers. I could not get it out without you know, denting the wood or ruining it. So I had to work around it. Shannon said, do you have a video regarding waxes, all the different types we hear about? Well, Shannon, maybe that's something I, I'm gonna do in the membership. Shannon's in my service anthology membership. And maybe I will do that. I think that's a great idea because waxing for me is the icing on the cake. It can make or break a piece. And we also want a wax that when it dries, it feels nice and clean, nice and smooth. It's not sticky, um, you know, it's not gummy. And I just think wax also makes the paint very, it gives it a luster that's really, really beautiful. So Shannon, thank you for that idea. I'm definitely gonna do it. And you guys, if you're not in my membership, if you go over to YouTube, I have certainly talked about waxes. I am always talking about waxes. If you took my antique finish workshop, I show you how to tint your own waxes if you want, mix them. Waxing is just, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing in itself for sure. All right, Shannon, that's a great, Shannon said, I'd love to learn more and understand the differences. Absolutely, so we'll definitely do that. So you guys, if you can, if you're able to get out, go see if you can find yourself an old jewelry box. Look at how pretty that is. I just love it. And I know I'm limited here because I didn't lift my camera up high enough, but can you see that it goes really well? Maybe I'll do a little reel. I'll take a video of this with the front. And as this ages, it's just gonna get more and more beautiful. And you guys, you could find these. There's the side with like faded wallpaper effect. You can find these jewelry boxes for not a lot of money for sure. And quickly, I wanna show you one other experiment I did. I was laughing. The deer made it, right, Shannon? I love it too. And I didn't even think of that until I kind of did it when I was moving the, um, the scrap around. Yeah, he's leaping across my jewelry box. But somebody told me when last week I would I showed how to gild um, pine cones, 
And that's over on YouTube if you want to see it. Surface Anthology is also here on my Facebook page. And I did a little experiment. I cut out a leaf out of, I don't have it here, but craft paper. And this is actually metallic paint. And it's really cool. This is totally dry. And it's kind of neat. It's, it's, not to me as beautiful as the gilded leaves and that's, that's also a video over on YouTube but I put it with some other leaves dried leaves and gilded leaves and it added like another layer of texture and kind of shininess bling so if you don't have leaves near you like my leaves aren't falling yet and Shannon you asked about this when I gild my leaf the leaves the oak leaves and I don't do maple, I do oak because it's strong. I try to do maple and they kind of dry out. I pick them up as soon as they fall off the tree when there's still a little bit of moisture left there and they're not completely crunchy and dry. But this has got a really nice gleam to it and with the other gilded, you know, the pine cones and stuff, it looks really beautiful. So you, if you do not have oak leaves where you are, you can just draw one on some craft paper. You can either gild one side and paint one side or um, gild both sides, whatever you want to do, and cut some out with just the craft paper, right? And don't gild them. Just leave them on the brown craft paper and put them all together and it's really, really pretty. So give that a shot, all right? Everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. If any of you are taking Joni's of Weathered Wings workshop, I'm going to be taking that too. I'm really excited. She's getting me in the Christmas mood, you know. I feel also sort of like I'm skipping over pumpkins and fall though. So I'm going to do her Christmas thing and then move back. And then I might do some ornament uh, workshops. I'm going to say, but to me, it's all good. I also, I have the philosophy, the earlier you start the holidays, it doesn't make them come faster. It makes them last a lot longer, and I love that. You are so welcome, Shannon. It's good to see you, Sandy, Shannon, Barbara, Amanda. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again back here with a new project. All right? Happy